Coming up, a very special Bowie knife is our next Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway. I get a very special Bowie knife from my buddy Doug. It's the one that Jim used on the sandbar. And 15 blade shapes. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, one of my favorite comments, actually all of my favorite comments this week were on the Pepperwool uh, interview with Baron, and I got some really great rev- um, comments. People went out and bought the knives uh, after our interview. Uh, here's one from OG Blade Reviews, our good friend Dave. He says, great designer and interview, very educated and intelligent man. Yes, uh, speaking with Baron McKay of Pepperwool was... <laughs> definitely felt like uh i was in a i was in the wrong league you know just tell me about physics tell me about design it was really great talking with him a uh, very relatable dude but also super smart and designing these awesome knives uh by the way this has been in my pocket back right pocket basically uh since he sent it to me i love this knife and i've been passing it around the office um and or showing it off at the office and people love it they're like oh look it's one-handed. I'm like, eh, the knife I gave you is one-handed, but that's cool. All right. Uh, next up is from our good buddies at Fisher Blades and um, Chaz and John brothers. Uh, we're big fans of Baron and Pepperwool. Cool knives, he says. Well, they worked together back at SOG uh, back in the old days that w- weren't that long ago, but uh, we're a big part of the rebranding. So um, cool to see one knife company give another knife company a shout out so i really appreciate that and thank you everyone one and all for watching uh the shows the interviews and leaving comments it's greatly appreciated all right well all that out of the way let us now get to a pocket check what's in his pocket let's find out here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives carrying an og today i got the strider knives uh, smf i always wondered what the uh i i knew it is standard military something something i always forget that but anyway i had this on me today Uh, i absolutely love this knife i give it very little uh air time these days um but it's a stalwart in my collection it's one of the big three uh to me the strider the uh, chris reeve knives the hinderer the old school triumvirate Uh, I'm very glad to have this knife. This one came from Zelric42. He put a beautiful edge on it. Do you remember Zelric? He's uh, one of the Todd brothers uh, who are now just designers. He does not do his channel. Hasn't done his channel in a coon's age. Actually, last time I think he was on YouTube was on Thursday Night Knives. He used to sort of co-host in the early days of Thursday Night Knives. Anyway, I bought this from him, and I've always been a big fan of the CC model of the SNG and the SMF. The CC... Uh, is concealed carry, and that just means it's a thinner handle with contours. You can see how contoured that handle is, as opposed to the big, blocky Lego versions of the Striders or the Gunner Grip, which has a a deeply sort of golf ball pocketed texture on the handle. Uh, So my favorite model of Strider is the SMF, this size, and then this uh cc model being my favorite version of this model and it's got a deep hollow grind a hollow ground blade which is excellent my first strider which i got rid of unfortunately uh, was a lego smf kind of fit the hand like a brick and it had a pretty oblique uh flat ground edge uh but i guess to the strider fans uh none of that matters but to me it did and ultimately that's why i sold it to get something else but uh, really glad to have this in the collection and happy to have it uh, in my pants today. <clears throat> Next up, from my good buddy, uh, Byron. He's got a channel called Split and Slices. He is a gentleman and a scholar and a very thoughtful individual. And he got me this on his European jaunt uh, last year. I'm going to turn down this light. It's blinding with all these. It's blinding with all these shiny materials under it. Uh, this is the Swiss Army 2. Uh, it is a single layer alox, but it's got two tools in it. The Swiss Army one just has the big blade. Uh, this is a 90, uh, 90, 90, 93 millimeter uh, knife. 
and the a uh the number two the swiss army two has two blades check that out it's got that beautiful hawk build pruning blade now when he got this for me he didn't just find this because he knew i wanted it and it's very hard to find uh but he got my name engraved in it bob demarco and he got the knife junkie engraved in it so this this knife means a whole lot more than just kind of a rare swiss army knife this is a very personalized knife from someone who's uh who's got a great channel split and slices he's a very gracious dude and he's been he's been on the knife junkie uh ride for a long long time and i always appreciate his comments uh which usually crack me up you know during thursday night knives uh but this really took the cake when i when i saw this not only did he send this in that care package a year ago but he sent something from my wife uh from from europe also and it was just really really nice so here just to show off the fact that this is a swiss army too i will put that other blade out i love these single layer uh victorinox designs they're really really uh pocket friendly and very very useful uh next up i was carrying the jed hornbeak necromance now you can tell that the seasons have changed and i'm wearing heavier clothes because this is very much on the outside of what i will uh edc in terms of fixed blades uh it's pretty big for a an edc fixed blade and and heavy uh but man alive is it awesome this thing is uh so this has to ride in the three o'clock position in the waistband um but in doing so i also have to have like a sweater or a shirt over it uh because it it does show itself off but i i gotta say when i carry this knife i really feel like uh, i'm <laughs> ready for anything i'm ready for way more than i need to need to be but man i love this knife so double-edged it's got that top swedge is a zero ground scandy edge and then a hollow grind here with a very very sharp uh, regular edge it's sort of like a sub hilt fighter it's like a modernized version of the loveless sub hilt fighter and i also think that the blade almost looks tanto ish american tanto ish with that straight edge here and then the turn it takes towards the tip just beautiful beautiful workmanship um i'm not sure if it if it reads here but if you have ever held a jed hornbeak knife you would know his his work is just exquisite um I don't know how else to describe it. It's just perfect perfection. And uh, even even some of the designs he makes that I'm not fond of looking at, uh, to hold them in your hand, it's a, a revelation. Uh, and I'm thinking of the Kukri right now, which to me looks slightly awkward, but man alive, is that a cool knife? I've held one and then I've watched Scab go to town uh, with his. So Jed Hornbeak really incredible custom knives i would check him out by the way great sheath too show that yeah great great sheath locks in there snap okay uh nextly and lastly i've been carrying this thing way more than i expected uh, this was sent to me by uh savivi Sencut, and this is the Sencut practice i've been practicing with it and uh yellow i saw it i was like oh that's a bright yellow and i've always had this theory um you know i used to work in the fashion industry just in the production side uh, uh making videos and stuff uh, covering the fashion industry i didn't work in i worked in the video industry covering the fashion industry but anyway i came to the conclusion at that time that no one looks good in yellow unless they're african-american or maybe middle eastern and have like a darker skin tone but all of my white friends who would put on yellow ugh, I don't know it just makes you look sallow and pale so i've always had sort of a <laughs> a thing against yellow i don't know it sounds sounds kind of mean yellow is such a bright and happy color i love these yellow scales uh you can tell they're starting to get dirty and i've used this for some real grunt work because when this came out we talked about it uh during uh, knife news and Sencut is billing this as a hard use knife and i'll tell you it's done some pretty it's cut some pretty stout stuff around here, at least uh, as far as that goes. Um, we have a little bit of stuff we have to get rid of, and I was cutting it all down with this. What am I talking about? I'm talking about some old school projects that are like five ply cardboard uh, that I was burning. I was burning a whole bunch of stuff last week, and this thing, uh, though I had a big fixed blade on my hip, I had the boon on my hip, 
this one kept getting pulled out and it is great it's a great knife and it's inexpensive and i thought i wouldn't you know i thought it would be uh you know just a run-of-the-mill knife that wouldn't impress me but i've been very happy with it and popping it in my back pocket quite a bit so this is the practice it was giving me emotional support today um really they all were uh, this is what i had on me what you have on you let me know drop it in the comments below and uh, as i fold these up and put them away i want to tell you about buy me a coffee and a wonderful guy named tom butler tom thank you so much for buying me five coffees here's to you i love coffee and every little bit helps now i know a tom butler um but I'm not sure if this is that Tom Butler. I have a feeling that Tom Butler doesn't watch the Knife Junkie podcast. He's, he's a little bit smarter than that. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. That's not what I mean. <laughs> That's not what I mean. I'm not calling you not smart. What I'm saying is, is uh, his interests lie elsewhere, like in fine, fine theater. And this is not fine, fine theater. It is fine, fine knife commentary. So Tom Butler, thank you so much for the coffees. I really appreciate it. I'm going to consider this one of them delicious thank you tom all right and next up uh, i got uh uh i just wanted to say well i want to say thank you to steven levinson i didn't put this in the notes uh, uh but we mentioned him on thursday night knives he's a new tactical junkie so steven thank you so much for signing up at patreon we greatly appreciate uh your commitment to this show I, I, it's uh, well it's humbling so thank you very much sir uh also, uh, before I get to the very special Knife Junkie Knife giveaway, I just want to say I was watching Forged in Fire with my wife. We've been catching up on the latest season, which we've been recording, so I'm not exactly sure when this came out, but there was a Mastersmith. This is this is a, a series called Beat, Beat the Unbeaten or something like that, where they bring on uh, knife makers to uh, beat returning champions from Forged in Fire. And there was this uh, Master Bladesmith, ABS Master Bladesmith, who had an absolute hissy fit when he lost. Yeah, he didn't make the knife right. He didn't follow specs. He made it too long, and he didn't put an essential swedge at the tip of his uh, 1918 cutlass. That's this That's this thing right here, uh, which has a very distinct clip point. He didn't put it on there. The guy he was competing against, one of the unbeaten champions, his blade broke upon testing into three pieces, which was a bummer, of course. Uh, but they didn't even test the ABS Mastersmiths sword because he didn't put the uh swedge in it and he didn't uh you know he it was he was an eighth of an inch over because he was measuring cutting edge and not tip to uh tip to guard and they showed the the receipts you know they showed the the production assistant in the back saying this is how you're going to measure it you have any questions this is what you have to do any questions no questions uh and yet when he lost to the broken sword he had an absolute hissy fit stormed off the stage you could hear him in the back yelling at a production manager um and by the way that's a shit job i excuse me that's a terrible job i've had that before you are a gopher and you're the first one there last one out and that's how you earn your bones on a production uh crew and uh you know guy offered him water i don't want water i just want to win and i was like and i'm never gonna say anything good about forged in fire again i was like you're supposed to be a master bladesmith man have some have a little bit of anyway uh it, it was shocking to me because the whole time i was like i like watching this guy work he's a master and it's amazing but he didn't have a master's attitude <laughs> he had a he had a different kind of attitude and i used a different kind of word to describe him which my wife took deference to and uh, gave me a little dressing down for using that word so anyway uh it's interesting watch the new forged in fire um season uh, you might you might enjoy it all right lastly here uh i want to tell you about this month's um with that that's december 2024 our gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife is primo this is probably the best one we've ever given away and that's because i co-designed it it's the uh, knife junkie hog i'll put it the other way around hog tooth knives featuring the knife junkies blade design nova one we're giving away one of these nova ones um uh, Matt Chase uh, made uh, a, a, a fresh Nova One Bowie, but with uh, a, a bone colored handles. This one that's uh, on screen is ivory. We're not giving that one away. We're giving away a bone version. So it's very similar. Oh, this is the one right here. Nicely done, Jim. He's like, oh, yeah, bone. Got it for you. Um, 
this is so beautiful uh and it's on its way here i i'm gonna paw it for a little while and 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 ogle it until uh until I send it out to you. So I'm very excited to be featuring this. If you want to win this very exclusive and custom handmade knife by Matt Chase up in Massachusetts uh, and Hogtooth Knives, uh, become a patron. All you got to do is go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon and sign up as a gentleman junkie, and it will get you in the running uh, this December 19th. Again, uh, that is thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp, crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. You're listening to The Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's The Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Giant Mouse has another one out. We were talking about Giant Mouse last week. This one is the Nimbus V3, but actually uh, it's the V3.2, if you ask me, uh, because they've already put out the Nimbus 3. This is just with a different grind, but it makes sense from two guys from Denmark named Jens Anzo and Jesper Voxnes. You would expect them to make a knife with a Scandi grind and man alive. Is this a beauty? Uh, this is the Nimbus 3, uh, which has gone through a number. It was it was first released in 2018. In uh, uh, the the version two of this was in 2020. It was with Magna Cut and washers. They added washers instead of uh, bearings. And then the V3 came out in 2023 with Magna Cut and tweaked washers. And now this is the other V3 coming out in 2024. So I think it should be the V4. But anyway. I'm not good at math. Uh, this has a Scandinavian grind. That's a zero ground edge where the edge bevel is the edge. Uh, outstanding at uh, wood woodwork, you know, uh, outdoor chores and that kind of thing. You can see it's on a piece of wood there. Uh, so it's very much favored by bushcrafters, a, a grind very much favored by bushcrafters and outdoorsmen. Uh, this one, though, is in S90V and it's available now. Go check it out. Uh, this EDC stalwart is now uh, kind of a outdoorsy knife. Very, very beautiful, I think, too. I always like the look of the giant mouses, but they're a little bit smaller than I like to collect, so that's my excuse for not buying them. All right, next up from Best Tech. This is a big one. Uh, this is from Justin Lundquist and, uh, and Best Tech Knives. This one is called the Vestige. Uh, and... I looked it up vestige. It's like a, it, it's like the last little bits of something uh, that are going away. I, I know how to use the term in a sentence, uh, but it was good to look it up. You might want to look it up because my definition there just kind of sucked. So seven years ago, um, Justin Lundquist came out with a Kaiser Feist, very super clean design. And he's been raging ever since uh, coming out with really, really great designs. But this one I love the best uh, so far. It's big uh, at, three and a half inches of magna cut now i've seen where it's uh also 4.2 inches but i went straight to their website and and it's actually three and a half inches but it's got a big handle big blade and uh a big beautiful clip point with a nice fuller and a flipper uh, this thing comes with a variety of different handles uh, contoured titanium handles with carbon fiber inlays or micarta inlays. And I think they have five different flavors. Uh, only 3.6 ounces for a biggish knife. That's a really, uh, really good weight. And it's available now. Uh, next up from Boker Knives, this is Boker Magnum. Boker Magnum, we don't talk about too much. We talk about uh, uh, Boker Plus mostly. Um, that's their middle tier and the most um, prolific tier and kind of the highest. Uh, quality to value ratio but this this is the magnum line and that's their budget line and a lot of the times you know people don't pay much attention to those uh but this one is beautiful and it's uh, i think it's signaling a sort of turn for boker magnum plus this is called the empry uh, i'm sorry boker magnum line not plus uh, this is the empry and it is an elegant in-house design with that uh, really nice checkered and a fragged white G10 handle, nice and slim and arced, but the blade is what really draws my eye. A, a beautiful, long, swedged harpoon drop 
point uh, with a flipper and a front flipper. And uh, I looked it up. It's uh, MSRP of this sucker is 40 bucks. So, you know, you're going to be able to get it for a lot less than that uh, at your various uh at your various uh, purveyors of knives nice and slim uh kind of gentlemanly knife and but also uh tipping the hat uh, to the design uh to the tactical designs reversible deep carry pocket clip this thing is under three ounces so the reason i'm showing this it's not necessarily something uh that 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 i'm gonna go for but it would make a great gift this would make a great gift for uh someone just kind of getting into knives or someone you want you want to get into knives and uh i like the black and white colorway reverse tuxedo some people call it uh some people call it stormtrooper i just call it black and white i think it looks cool available now and as i said who knows maybe a good christmas gift stocking stuffer type thing all right last up this one i mean this one just is so beautiful to me uh that i would I'd really like to have it. I'd like, and you'll you'll know which version. Uh, this is a the Wee Knives Acuminal, Acuminal, um, and it's just gorgeous. Three point nine eight inches of Vanex. We don't hear that uh, steel too much on uh, on folding knives, but this is a super corrosive resistant uh, steel. Also, not bad. Not a slouch in the edge retention uh, department. Now this one is the, is the version I like with that really subdued brushed gray handle and acid wash blade. It is stunning to me. Now this looks either like a whale to me or an Italian race boat. It falls in either one of those categories for me. Ben Schwartz of knife news thinks it looks aerodynamic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with him on that. But uh, so long full bladed swedge on this elegant drop point. Um, those are uh, uh, chamfered slabs of titanium. Comes either in this uh, dark gray or you can get it in this super colorful and flamed uh, kind of swirly blue version uh, handle with um, what are we calling this? Fafnir pattern damasteel. Uh, and from this picture, I can't see any damasteel on it so maybe there's a third model and maybe i got my uh maybe i got my signals crossed but uh uh it is a little it's a pricey bird 440 bucks msrp i'm sure you'll be able to get it for slightly less but i mean you know probably not that much i don't know if they do the map pricing or not but incredibly desirable knife uh, as far as i'm concerned i love this knife it is it is beautiful and uh i will make it mine maybe all right, coming up, we're going to check out the state of the collection. We're going to look at a couple of new things that came in from my good buddy, Doug. But before we do, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, check out Patreon. And also, uh, you can download the show to your favorite podcast app. Uh, so you can listen to these golden tones as you drive, as you wash the dishes, as you rake the leaves. Have you raked your leaves? You better. It'll kill your grass if you don't. I got to go through version two this weekend which bums me out really uh, like i cleaned it up so beautifully and then someone else's tree next door took a dump all over my yard so there you go all right coming up the state of the collection adventure delivered your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor survival edc and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals the knife junkie.com slash battle box and now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I want to show off two really cool things that my buddy Doug Bull uh, sent me. I say, my buddy, I haven't met him in person, but he's left a huge impression on me. Not only is he a gentleman junkie and frequent commenter, uh, but he's also a generous man. And he's he's sent me three knives so far that are just so cool. And this is the latest. Uh, this is a forest Bowie. Uh, I'm not sure who made this. I'm not sure if he knows who made this, but it's a stout and sturdy forest Bowie. Now, what's a forest Bowie, you say? 12 inches long, and um, the guard is the actual blade. So uh, different than the kind of Bowie we generally think of. But this is, uh, as as the story goes, this is the Bowie shape and you know style that was used in his famous sandbar duel. Uh, Jim Bowie had a famous duel on a sandbar outside Natchez, I believe, or no, no, Nacogdoches, I think. And uh, 
in doing so he disemboweled someone he got shot someone produced a sword cane it was a it was a grim and grisly affair but he uh he walked away from it with this knife and then as the story goes he gave it to um a friend of his edwin forrest uh who was a famous stage actor at the time for the stage play uh, depicting that event. Uh, the knife, the Forest Bowie, was found in the 1980s at the family at the Forest family estate in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. And so we've known about this knife since then. And uh, uh, I know that Bark River makes a version of it. I've seen a lot of custom versions of this knife, and it is so cool. I'm going to bring this over to the main camera for a second, just so you can see scale-wise uh, next to my, my noggin. This is 12 inches long, and it, it it it's it's almost got a recurve if you look at it it's got a, a deep belly up front an ever so slight upward i mean if i go like this i can see it kind of dips down a little bit uh but it's got a an up uh a spine side point is what i'm trying to say so uh different from the bowies we know where it's clipped meaning cut from here to down here where that puts the point a little bit lower and gives you a a, a, a swedge on the back uh, to do back cuts and stuff with not that you couldn't do that with this uh, i have and uh, it is vicious big it looks like a big 12 inch butcher knife uh, frankly uh, and i'm i'm a big fan uh, doug um, accidentally sent this without the sheath he's going to send me that sheath um, and I appreciate that uh, because I've been walking around the house with this a lot and being very, very careful. This has been a TV viewing knife, you know, i.e. Uh, this is the knife I'll use if someone storms into the house while I'm watching TV. I'll have this in my left hand and something else in my right, if you know what I mean. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll reenact that whole sandbar duel. No, I won't, thankfully. Uh, but beautiful micarta handles with the with the uh, cross hatching on this. I, I absolutely love this. I think he got this from Chicago Knife Works, if I'm if I'm uh, correct. So thank you so much, Doug. I love this knife, and actually, I'm thinking I might use this this coming weekend outside. See what it see what it's all about. I won't be batoning with it, uh, but just kind of seeing how it works on on uh, organic material out back. Beautiful, beautiful Bowie knife, and I got to say, a great addition to my Bowie collection. Uh, because I have a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of different styles, and this one is a totally new style for me. Carefully place this over here. I want to show you something else that Doug got me real quick. Uh, this is the Blade Warrior book, uh, Underground Knife Combat Secrets, um, from uh, the gentleman in, who uh, is responsible for Berserker Blades, uh, a company I, I follow on Instagram. But man, this thing is so cool. And it tells it like it is. It does not mince words. And it it also does not mince pictures. It, it has these beautiful um, hand-drawn pictures that really get into um, how knives are made, as you can see here, different types of knives, but also different ways to carry, different ways to deploy, different ways to wield, different places to cut, and uh, different tactics for fighting. Um, and I really, really like it. It goes into mindset and it talks about things that most uh, people are afraid to talk about when it comes to knives and knife combatives and defense. Now, it also has different ways to train. Um, that's pretty gory, so I'm not going to show some of that stuff, but really really highly recommend this book i i can't wait to read it to like sit down and read it uh soup to nuts because uh, i th i think it's going to maybe bust a few myths um and for me and also give me some ideas and maybe um reinforce some things that i've thought all along uh because this is the kind of thing i think of all the time and it's very rare that you see um it in print that you can uh, kind of pour over like that. So very, very excited about that, that book. So thank you so much, Doug. I really appreciate that. I do indeed. All right, still to come, we're going to talk about uh, 15 blade shapes. Um, we're going to use folders to illustrate them. Uh, this is something I did like the fifth episode, I believe, of the Knife Junkie podcast when I was just a wee babe in the woods, babe in arms. And... Uh, uh, so I'm uh, 
going to do a little update here. Uh, but first, go to the knifejunkie.com slash shop. Check out some of the cool t-shirts Jim has been making. This is one of my favorites these days uh, because as my girls say, even though it's not Thanksgiving yet, it's still Christmas season. I disagree. Just because you play Mariah Carey on the radio doesn't mean it's Christmas. But uh, knives out, cookies ready. And if you're just listening, it's a it's a, a picture of a very cheerful looking gingerbread man with a big knife uh, staring at a plate of cookies. And I love it. I love gingerbread. I love cookies. I love knives. I love Jim. I love his T-shirts. So please go to the knifejunkie.com slash shop. Check that out. And there's also a lot of other really cool stuff up there. Uh, Jim has really cultivated a uh, an amazing merch uh it's not even a page merch section of the website with so much cool stuff. You want a hat, want a mug, want a mouse pad? Probably not, but uh, we got those there too. So go check those out. All right. Let us check out some knife shapes, some blade shapes and uh, on folders. But these, the reason I'm using folders is because I don't have all these blade shapes in fixed blades. Would that I did. I'd be a happy, 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 happier man. Um, but I'm already pretty happy. Here we go. First one, since we were talking Bowie, let's talk Bowie. Uh, this one of my favorite uh, Bowie shapes, period. This is a long swedge, double peaked Bowie. Um, my my expression. But when we were talking about the forest Bowie and looking at how it is a swedgeless affair, uh, this Bowie here, the hinderer, is, is what the original Bowies evolved into. So you still have... a a long usable straight section of cutting edge and then a deep belly uh, terminating at a point. But in this case, you've got a nice long swedge uh, that uh, comes from mid blade. In this one, it's a little closer to the handle than, than the tip, which to me makes it more of a Spanish clip point, but we won't get into that right now. But that swedge does a couple of things. Uh, that swedge right here, I'm sorry, this uh, clip, this cutaway here does a couple things. It drops the point to the center line or to a lower point than the spine, uh, making it easier to index uh, from different angles. And it also slenders out, uh, makes the tip slender. And in many cases, if the swedge continues all the way to the tip, creates a diamond-like point, uh, more like a dagger than a kitchen knife, say, or a flat-spined uh, drop point. <clears throat> So just looking at it, uh, if you've got eyes in your head, you can see how gorgeous this thing is. Uh, I'm a particular fan of the uh, Bowie shape from Hinderer. I, I, I really dig it. And it also sort of takes some cues from the Mac V Sog, classic double peaked Bowie from the 60s, originally uh, from the 60s, and which we see not only in the, in the Sog knives and the Mac V Sog. <clears throat> Sog is a company but Mac V Sog uh, was a group in uh, uh, a special observations group, at basically commandos uh, in during Vietnam. And <clears throat> when you hear Mac V Sog, it's referring to a blade shape. So a bunch of different companies make the Mac V Sog Bowie style knife, uh, and Sog the company kind of made that famous in the '90s and early 2000s. So this is the Bowie knife, and this is the Hinderer XM24, uh, a four-inch blade, which really allows this gorgeous design to express itself fully. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next up, we're going to look at a Tonto. Now, this sort of uh, straddles the line, if you ask me, between American Tonto and Japanese Tonto. A little bit more American than Japanese, but... Uh, this, this is what we've got here. Uh, this is the Riot K2. And uh, to this day, my favorite Riot knife, uh, Riot branded knife, that is. They make a lot of cool knives for other makers. We'll see one here in this list coming up. But this features a long, straight cutting edge with a deep hollow grind. And then it, it transitions into a flat grind for stoutness up at the tip. And in this case, it's got a curved section up front oftentimes it'll be totally bone uh totally straight and when it's straight it's more it looks more like a chisel this is the reason i showed this is because it has attributes of both the japanese and the american style uh, style tanto american style tanto has the 
uh, secondary point right here. And uh, the Japanese one has a curved tip uh, without that point. So this one kind of has both because it's got that curved portion up front and the long straight. And then, of course, the two different grinds. It's a compound grind. You can always tell when looking at pictures of a Tonto if it's hollow and flat, if the two grinds meet in a curved curved angle there, like or a curved line there, like that. If it's straight, like you see on a lot of, say, cold steels these days, uh, that means that both grinds are flat. And that that's neither here nor there, neither good nor bad. This I like. Personally, I like the hollow grind and the flat grind. And I must admit, uh, I discovered I liked the hollow grind for cutting second. Uh, I really like the way it looks. It always reminded me of a straight razor, uh, but a much more aggressive one. This, of course, has the contoured uh, titanium handles, beautifully bronzed, and I love the sort of dragon texture. It's got a dimpled uh, gravel road uh, swedge here, but or not swedge, uh, bolster here, faux bolster. Uh, but then these things back here remind me of dragon scales, so... I love it. I think it's really cool, really beautiful, and a great knife. The first knife I think I had where I was just goo goo gaga about the action. Sorry about that. I don't know. It's been a couple of days without sleep, so I'm talking out of school here. But a great, great knife. And I know that Knife Joker uh, did a whole bunch of different versions, uh, proprietary versions of this knife. So they had Riot uh, dust off the design and do this knife in a bunch of different sort of colorways and, and handle textures. Next blade shape is the sheep's foot, and I don't have too many sheep's feet, and uh, which is a surprise to me because it's a very aggressive blade shape that I, I like. But in this case, uh, I chose to show it on the peace arc, uh, the Emerson Police Survival and Rescue Knife. Police Survival and Rescue Knife. And uh, th there is a version of this just called the Sark without the P at the front that has a, a rounded tip and a like seat belt cutter um, notch in the back. So a very, very purpose-driven knife, just not, uh, just not my bread and butter. This is, I love this knife. It's like a pocket gununting. That's the curved, downward curved, sickle-shaped uh, sort of Filipino sword. That's why I got this in the first place. Uh, very, very aggressive looking knife. I remember buying this. I don't know why, just randomly uh, we were at a barbecue at my wife's uh, uncle's house my wife's uncles are all incredible cooks so are her aunts but they do uh, the, they do these bolivian meats and i remember what i was eating when i ordered this because i was doing it all surreptitiously didn't want my wife to see that i was ordering a knife while we were sitting at the dinner table but i was eating beef heart they call it uh, uh chicharro no no that's pork i can't remember what they call it right offhand but i was eating that which is delicious this beef heart done on the grill and I ordered this uh, because uh, where I got it from, it was on sale and I didn't even know it existed. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's an Emerson. Uh, this is 20, 2013. So this is 11 years old, this sucker. Man, I'm getting old. But so are you. Uh, opens up with the wave 154 cm this is chisel ground uh one of these days i got to do a grind video talk about the different grinds but a chisel ground blade as opposed to and a chisel ground edge so the chisel ground blade means the bevel is only on one side the other side is totally flat and this side is a chisel ground edge which means the edge also has one side to it uh, I it used to, um, before I really understood how great chisel ground blades and edges are, I used to not like it because I thought, oh, they're being lazy. They just didn't put the, the grind on the other side. Well, that's not really the case. When you look at a V-ground knife uh, in cross-section, V-ground blade in cross-section, and then you remove it by half, you have half the thickness and it's super it's like a super thin chisel so these things get incredibly sharp slip through materials incredibly easily however if you're not used to them they track differently through the material uh, because you have an angle on only one side of the blade it takes about two seconds to figure that out and to make accommodations um, one might look at this and think it's a worn cliff but the because of that continuous curve from um from thumb from thumb to to tip across the spine but we have a curve here on the cutting edge 
So that makes this a hawkbill. You could probably put a karambit here. You could put uh, uh, several styles of pecal here. Uh, but those are different things to me. And uh, I will show you. Uh, not so much the not so much the um, karambit, but the pikal. And I'll show you pikal right now. Uh, some of you may say pikal is not an actual blade shape, and I might tend to agree with you, but there are certain aspects of pikal knives that have begun to emerge as it as it has popularized and become uh, more um, um, more common. And that has to do with uh, the angle of the blade to the handle itself and the tip placement. Uh, this here is the um, uh, Kubi, sorry, Kubi Knives DC Blades Scythe. Now, DC Blades is a uh, is a partnership, a collab, a collaborative knife design partnership company between uh, Tier One, that's uh, Justin of Tier One, and Old Squirrel Knives, and they've designed some really cool knives together. Um, and uh, Justin is a stand-up guy. You might know his channel, Tier One Gear Reviews. Uh, he's a really great guy. He's been on the show before, and uh, also just an outstanding and prolific designer. And he's been very generous with me in terms of, um, in terms of well. He gave me this knife, but also uh, opening my eyes to other designers and helping me uh, with thinking about knife design. But in this case, I wanted to show it off because of where that tip is. The tip rides above center line, and most Pecal knives do that. Uh, they'll have that hawkbill shaped blade, but it will be angled in such a way that the tip is higher than the center line. And why is that? I'll show you on the main camera. A uh, pecal knife is intended to be held like this with the tip down and the edge in. Uh, you, could, you, you could carry it however you want. You could use it like this to open up packages and stuff. But the intended purpose is as a fighting tactical knife. And when you hold it like this, it puts the tip right where it needs to be in a back fist. If you're holding it like this, bang, and you, and you thrust it out like this, it puts that tip in a place where it's going to uh, enter into your target without having to cant your, without having to change the angle of your wrist. So I am giving this its own category, and it's the Pical category. It it's it it is uh, pre, uh, it is admittedly hawk bill adjacent, but a lot of different blade shapes are other blade shape adjacent. So uh, we're we're going to see that right here, because here we have a kukri blade shape in the knight elements. Uh, so designed by Jason Knight, uh, this one was released by Elements and uh, produced by Fox Knives. Now you can just get them from Fox Knives. I think Elements is no longer a part of this. Uh, but it is a kukri all day long. We can see that from the handle, sure. But we can really see it in the blade. A downward arcing recurve with the tip way low. Much like the uh, Nepalese fighting knife. Uh, that the Kukri soldiers carry, or the um, Gurkha soldiers carry. Um, so in this, we have a, a deep slasher, a, a, an excellent chopper. Now this is a this is a folding knife, so it's not going to do too much chopping, but it's got that recurve. And um, I'll show you how it differs from the next one, which I'm about to show you, and I'll show you right now because. Um, they are very adjacent, and this is just a recurve. This is the Amphibian from Microtech. Uh, if you viewed last week's show, last week as you're as we're recording this, I talk all about recurves, and I show these two knives, but they are different. Uh, they they take advantage of that recurve shape, which draws material into the cutting belly right here, uh, because of that that initial curve. But in this case, it puts the tip, in this case being the uh, Microtech Amphibian, just the standard recurve, it doesn't put the tip way down low. Yeah, it's, it's low, but we're looking at an arced overall handle. So really, it's a centerline point uh, with a deep descent and a recurve. So uh, I just defined it using its own term. That's, that's not, you can't do that. Okay. So, but it does have that portion here that draws material into the belly. It's just the tip placement and the overall arcing of the knife are different. So we have a kukri here, and we have a recurve here. Um, and I posit that having 
serrations on the recurve portion of the knife makes it extra wicked. Yes, that's a technical term. Extra, extra wicked. Love this knife too. The Microtech Amphibian was originally a super, super rare bird. First came out in uh, 2006 and uh, saw very, very, very limited custom release. Like if you have an original Amphibian, um, that's pretty amazing. Uh, but now they're available widely. They have been for about a year uh, with their Ramlock, Barlock, and Man Alive. It is so good. It's so good. And on the on the let me put it this way: it's it's less expensive than that super cool Wii I was talking about uh, during um, Knife Life News. All right, next up. Now this is also Kukri and Recurve adjacent, and and I'm 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 coining this <laughs> term. I'm calling this a reverse recurve. That's right, baby. Reverse recurve. Now, some people call it an S-curve blade. Uh, this is the Black Talon II. We've also seen this blade shape in a less robust uh, version in the Patri in the in the Patriarch, the Spiderco Patriarch, and the Matriarch. Um, and uh, it it really it it was a knife design originally arrived at by Spiderco. It was commissioned by the South African government in the early 90s when a lot of rapes were happening. And they wanted a knife that they could uh, uh, sell for self-defense that required absolutely zero training. And so you can see intuitively why this very funky looking blade would require no training. All you have to do is be able to grip it and swing your arms and someone's getting hurt. Um, <clears throat> It's got a very, very downward pointing tip, which makes it virtually impossible to thrust with. You can peck with it percussively like a drumstick, uh, but it's it's not a thruster. So if you're someone who practices with knives and you do a lot of thrusting, as I happen to do, you have to change your mindset when holding this knife. Um, but I would argue that the knife itself and the blade shape itself just uh, intuitively gets you to make that change why do you call it a reverse recurve bob well because the belly happens first and the recurve happens second right at the point uh, when you look at i'll use the the kukri because it's the most extreme recurve uh, i have here uh it's opposite <clears throat> you start with the recurve end with the bell uh, uh continue with the belly and then have a relatively upward pointing tip or at least a tip you can use in the thrust on the reverse recurve that we see in the Patriarch, the Matriarch, and the ta Black Talon II, uh, the tip is pointing down because the recurve is coming second and the belly first. Hey, uh, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, they're both devastating. Uh, what would I rather go up against? Uh, stupid question. So I'm not going to answer it, but they're both just nasty. Just looking at them and the serrations on the black talent too. You can get the black talent too with or without serrations. But if you're already getting a knife, this nasty and gnarly, why not just go all the way, go full Monty and get the serrations on your recurve. Uh, if possible, I have a, uh, a couple of vaqueros uh, by cold steel the beautiful recurve yadagon and i have that with serrations and it's just like you know i don't know what are you going to do against that absolutely nothing all right let's shift gears to a very very different style blade we're talking daggers and to me uh, to really be a dagger it's got to have two edges but really dagger is talking about the symmetry uh and this is a symmetrical uh, dagger design. Or, well, all dagger designs are symmetrical, but this is fully symmetrical in that it's double-edged. You know, can it really actually be symmetrical if it doesn't have a top edge? No, I say. Uh, but this is the Arcane Designs Antimatter. This is the other one uh, in this list made by Riot Knives. Uh, but but uh, as an OEM for Arcane. This is such a good knife. Now, this one I think is really catch as catch can. I'm not sure if they've released one of these in a, in a minute, but um, this is one of my favorite knives because you don't see too many double-edged daggers. You've got the arch nemesis from Sharp by Design. Good luck, A, finding one, and B, affording one. Uh, you have the Hinderer uh, Spartan. What, what was that called? 
Uh, also, good luck finding one. And then if you find one, good luck affording it. Uh, but that was a double-edged dagger that I slept on. And I was like, I'll wait till it comes out with, with bearings. What an idiot. What an idiot. Now you can't find them. And if you do, it's always the bayonet grind, which is not double-edged. But you can find a lot of daggers in your out the fronts. But this is not what we're talking about uh, because that's low-hanging fruit. This is not. Um, but anyway, the the, blagger, the dagger shape, what is it great for? It's great for, in this case, you've got a belly. Uh, and in many cases, you'll have hollow ground edges. So you can do pretty much everything with it. You can slash in both directions, cuts both ways like a bowie. And, uh, but at the tip, you have those quad uh, grinds those those four bevels coming together in a diamond shape so it's stout for for thrusting and stabbing and it gets in there real easily because it's it's like one big <laughs> swedge all 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 four sides sharpened and beautiful um just pretend i didn't say that last part uh, this knife is a difficult one to close not a difficult one but one you have to remember uh you've got two edges so you don't want to put your finger on the spine because it, it's very very sharp but as soon as you get the hang of that this hand does not work so well these days that thumb but uh, you can just kind of close it like that because it's on bearings and it will just drop lots of daggers come in different shapes uh, oftentimes you'll see them with straighter edges and those straighter edges make it better for thrusting but not so great for slashing i like the kind that have both uh, like think of this knife or think of the randall uh, number two or the Taipan from Cold Steel. Uh, you've got nice, nice bellies and you have hollow ground edges. So uh, whatever you lack in long bevel for, for a slashing and, and uh, slicing, you kind of make up for it with the hollow grind and the bellies. So I, I really like daggers. I really like daggers. Next up is a Persian, the Persian knife. I have only a couple of Persian knives. Now this is, by far the most exquisite. Um, this is from Herman Knives. This is the Herman Knives Ishtar. Herman Knives is a Polish uh, custom knife company, and they just make exquisite stuff. They're they're custom kind of like um, <clears throat> well, they don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know if they're actually custom. I don't know if you can call them an order what you want, but but they're custom quality. They they. They're all one-offs and they're beautiful. This one has a gravel road texture is what I like to call it on that uh, high voltage green anodized titanium handle. It is a, um, a liner lock and you have this really cool feature here on the beautiful uh, clip where there's a trench dug out underneath it um, to make it nestle in the pocket even better and uh, hassle your pants less. Really nice, uh, really nice backspacer here. But really the star of the show is that Persian blade. So a Persian blade has a continuous belly from uh, stem to stern and a curved spine, putting the tip above the thumb or above the spine of the handle. Uh, great on horseback for slashing, you know, as you as you ride by uh, your adversary with a big curved sword, uh, you you get a lot of slashing action with that uh, curve, a lot of uh, not slashing action, but depth of cut with the curve. Well, the same thing happens here in a smaller format. Some people don't like uh, Persian blades because of where it puts the point. It puts the point in a spot where it's maybe not as convenient for some utility tasks, like say drag cuts. Uh, I'm going to go over here. Like if you're cutting open a box, it might not put the tip where you want it, but let's face it. If you can't open up a box with a Persian style blade, you're doing something wrong. And uh, there are very easy fixes. Uh, but I get it. If you're cutting them open all day long, you're going to want a Warncliffe, which will be featured here shortly. Um, so this is the Persian. And uh, there are a couple of great Persian knives out on the market besides this Ishtar. And uh, I'm thinking of the, the Cold Steel, uh, um, the Cold Steels. And also there's a Spyderco and some really, really uh, great and robust knives with that with that shape. But that sweeping, uh, that upswept belly with the high tip, just great for slashing. Also great for outside thrusts. Um, in, in the style I learned, it's, what is it, the seven and the eight. You know, so you're coming from that side or coming from this side. It really does put the point 
uh, in a place where it follows the arc of your arm. So a lot of people don't think of of um, kukris or Persians as thrusters, but they really are. They can be incredible thrusters. It just depends on your angle. Next up, the simple and humble drop point. In this case, I'm showing it off on the Ritter Hogue R uh, RSK Mark One. RSK stands for Ritter Survival Knife and the Mark One. Uh, originally, these were OEM'd by, you know, designed by Doug Ritter and OEM'd by Benchmade back in the day. Those were called the Ritter Grips, the Ritter Griptilians. Uh, those went away many years ago, a number of years ago at this point, almost 10, and uh, was picked up by Hogue as the OEM, and they really took it and ran. I think they made it a better knife. They elongated the handle slightly. Uh, this is an auto version. I mean, this is way beyond uh, the Ritter grip at this point. They've done so many different things uh, to it. But automatic in this case, a nicely contoured handle with the radiating sunburst pattern. But the drop point blade is a universal... Um, like most of your knives are drop points. And so they can have a lot of different shapes. But uh, what it's referring to is the spine has a dip to the tip, a drop point. Um, it can be like this where, where the point is center line and or maybe even slightly lower. And that drop is precipitous. Or it could be like barely perceptible, like in the, um, you know, the SE models, the all the SE uh, Hungless models and SE three, four, five, etc. Those are all drop points, and they almost don't look like it because the drop is ever so slight. But uh, universally useful. Uh, no swedge, oftentimes on a uh, on a drop point. Not always, but uh, think of the Wii we were just looking at in Light Knife Life News. Uh, but for outdoor knives, I really like a drop point without a swedge. If you like to baton wood and make kindling that way, uh, you're not going to chew up your baton. Um, but uh, you still get that straight, the the considerable straight edge with the belly and then the uh, lower than spine tip drop point um, can take many, many shapes. This to me is the most uh, emblematic right here, the Ritter Hogue. All right. Next up, this is a sheep's foot and a sheep's foot is not a Warncliffe, is not a Kiridashi. This is the sheep's foot by uh this is american blade works and oh i i skipped over one we'll come back to that in a sec uh this is uh, marked by a straight spine and then a, a precipitous drop to the tip but after after hitting an angle so right here uh you'll see this a lot you see this more in um slip joints and what it is, it's great for utility. You have a, a perfectly straight edge um, that maybe unintuitively or an, anti-intuition, it it you're really maximizing uh, the cutting and slicing capability with a straight edge because it 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 engages the material to the very tip. A recurve will 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 accelerate a cut and and like that, but having that straight edge and then the tip uh, as your arm is arcing through a cut, you're, you're constantly presenting the material until you get to the tip. Uh, with a recurve, uh, you have diminishing returns after you hit that belly. Here, you do not. Talk about excellent for utility. Uh, the sheep's foot is that. It is a little less stabby than a couple of the uh, adjacent designs we're about to show, uh, but for utility and for pull cuts and for slicing uh it is an outstanding blade shape this knife the american blade works model 2 is an outstanding knife uh you've got this really nicely um milled handle here with sort of racing stripes the thing overall to me looks like a an art deco masterpiece uh, it's a beautiful knife closed here let me show it this way beautiful knife closed and a high performer um, made by a, a singular person. Uh, these things are super duper awesome. Uh, and also very well researched are the American Blade Work knives. All right, next I'm going to the Warncliffe, which I may have shown, I should have shown first because a lot of things get called a Warncliffe, but this is an actual Warncliffe. Uh, this here is the 
prototype. I cannot wait till this comes out wide. I think everyone should pre-order one. This is one of my favorite folders period uh the pinkerton standoff dirk pinkerton a huge fan of his designs and the man himself great guy uh but a, a warren cliff is a continuous drop it's got a, a fully straight edge and it has a continuous curved drop from the handle to the tip an uninterrupted curve so that is a true warren cliff we see them mostly uh in slip joint knives you'll see a lot of fixed uh fixed blade knives and Folders like this called Warren Cliffs, but they're not really Warren Cliffs or they're modified, quote unquote. But it's really great to have a true Warren Cliff on an outstanding uh, titanium frame lock folder. You have uh, a 3.7 inch blade, so a nice, nicely sized blade. It's a flipper. It's got a fuller uh, on the production model. It'll have a sharper shouldered fuller so you can easily uh, middle finger flick it. This one I can do with momentum and surface tension uh but but not really uh the um prototype fuller was not quite uh, milled out for that uh, purpose um but a, a beauty this thing is you know it, it it really walks the line between tactical knife and utility blade and that's dirk pinkerton's design philosophy if i can if i can say that he's never come right out and said that but to me every one of his knives are are, are equally excellent and equally suited to utility and to fighting and self-defense um, again you get the benefit of the straight edge always presenting uh to the with the arc of your arm it's always presenting the edge to the material and then with that tip down there, uh, just a nasty slasher and gouger. All right, next up is also Warren Cliff adjacent, and that's the Kiridashi, a Japanese utility blade. This is also a Pinkerton design, but this is made by Asymmetrical. Uh, this is the Asymmetrical Contact, and it it uh, had a lot to do with my inspiration for making my own tactical Kiridashi. Uh, EDC Kiridashi with uh, Matt of Hogtooth. This this has a uh, straight spine, a straight drop at uh, to the tip, but it has an upward facing, uh, upward raked edge, so that that edge is straight, and you get all the benefits of that. But also, it puts the point in center line, as opposed to I'll show it off with this, as opposed to uh, down low. So you can see how both of them have uh, their spines flat, but the Warncliffe uh, keeps the edge flat all the way to the tip, whereas the um, Kiridashi style ascends to a center line point. So yeah, uh, maybe splitting hairs here, but I thought it was necessary to break out the Kiridashi versus the Warncliffe versus the Sheep's Foot. Uh, so sheep's foot, a little more of a rounded and blunted point. Uh, the Warncliffe, a, a, a continuous curved descent from Ricasso to tip on the spine with a flat uh, flat edge. And then the Kiridashi with the ascending flat edge to that point that's in the center line. This is a great knife, by the way. I can't wait to see um, Beyond EDC and Asymmetrical uh, come back online. Uh, their stuff is really awesome. All right, second to last and penultimate here is the cleaver style blade. This is one of, like, this is just about the only one I have. Uh, this was given to me by an awesome guy who uh, frequents Thursday Night Knives. Thank you very much, sir. And he also gave one to his son at the same time who uh, also loves it. But that's a cleaver. I don't need to say much about it. It's a chopper. It is a, uh, but it has the benefit of a slight belly and a very low slung edge. Um, so you can use this against surfaces like cutting boards or, you know, a log or whatever you use. I've seen someone using this in a bushcraft video. Now I don't remember who it was, but it was obviously, it was obvious to me, uh, something given to that guy by the company because not something you would imagine as a bushcraft knife, but uh, yeah, he used it to, uh, to, to great effect. So uh, cleaver has that cleaver edge, the totally blunt tip, uh, flat, straight, uh, almost 90 degree down flat tip that you're not going to be stabbing with. You could peck with this. You could do something with that tip. Uh, but this is all about the cutting, the slicing, and the chopping.
and that is a cleaver blade. Love this. This is the Sentry L1 from O Knife, another company that makes some pretty pretty awesome uh, folders that came basically out of nowhere. I don't know they came out of the they came out of the uh, flashlight company. All right, last one here is the Chris. And last week when I was talking recurves, I called the Chris a re re recurve because for obvious reasons i wasn't trying to be cutesy either it really is a re re recurve you get the benefit of three recurves and then a hawk bill at the tip if the chris is done properly it has a downward descending tip so you can take advantage of that in a slash like a hawk bill knife or a karambit um this is a very difficult knife shape to produce uh, some people forge them out uh, grinding them out is no easier. Uh, that's why I was so impressed when Cold Steel came out with their all of their consumer uh, Chris models. I say consumer because, um, you know, you could presumably come out with a sword version of this and charge a whole lot of money for it because uh, it's a difficult blade to make. But they really dialed in <clears throat> mass production of the Chris in this blade, the six inch version of this tie light and then also the Voyager version of the Chris. Great knife. It's not just to look cool. Uh, the Flamberge, the European broadsword that had uh, this uh, many, many, many tight curves. Uh, they act like bread knives. They're they're like they're like uh, those undulating bread knives that just zip through loaves. Um, this will zip through whatever else you're you're going after of course it's a tactical style it's based on combat and so it's a nasty nasty slashing knife nasty cutter and uh when in a thrust those waves open up the wound channel something nasty all right thank you so much for joining me on this uh walk down 15 blade shape street. Uh, I love each one of them. They all have their different purpose. Uh, of course, they all cut, they all thrust, uh, but some of them excel at one, some of them excel at, at others, and uh, all of them are great to have in a collection. Be sure to uh, uh, check out your favorite blade shapes, figure out what you like them for, and uh, you know, see if you want to diversify your portfolio. All right, that does it for me. Uh, be sure to join us on Thursday for Thursday Night Knives. Not this week, of course, if you're watching this as it drops, as it's Thanksgiving, and I plan to be sleeping on the couch. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.